This is a video made by Crafty Masterman about how he built the Simon memory game inside of Minecraft. And this is me. If you want to know why I was in this video, I'd recommend checking it out, but seeing this work in Minecraft got me thinking, could I build this using triggers inside of Geometry Dash? Well, there's only really one way to find out. Before we start building this though, I think it's important to know what the Simon Memory game actually is. If you don't know how it works, the game is fairly simple. One colour lights up, you click that colour. Then the game shows you that colour plus another, followed by you clicking both of those colours in the correct sequence. Continue on with adding a colour to each round until you're having to remember a massive string of green, green Green, red, blue, red, red, across, up, back, until you screw up and put the wrong sequence in. Back, uh, uh. Oh no! Alright, now that I know how the game works, it's time for the scary bit. Actually building it. <laughs> so I got to work putting down triggers, trying to make things work, and destroying my brain. I've never really messed with the logic based stuff using GD triggers before, so this whole project was a massive learning process for me, and I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a complete emotional roller coaster. Building this level was basically just a cycle of figuring out how to get a certain game function to work with triggers, then, what is going on, bro? Followed by, it works! Repeat this process for almost every single component, and we have a game that on paper should work perfectly flawlessly. But in practice is a completely broken excuse for a minigame that only works when it feels like it. <gasps> it. That worked! That just worked! Why does it only work sometimes? But after changing something completely random and finally getting it to work somehow, I decided to shift around the position of some of the triggers, just to make it a little bit neater to look at and oh for god's sake it doesn't work anymore. To say this thing was finicky is a giant understatement, but after finally managing to fix that, I spent a good few hours working on making the level look pretty, because after all, it doesn't really feel like you're playing Simon until it actually looks like you're playing Simon. And so, after a grand total of over 12 and a half hours build time, I proudly present my new level, Simon Game. They call me the best player. Ow. Oh, oh player one, player two. Oh, two player. Oh, what oh, the? Oh, wait, what? Two player, oh boy. Oh, what the? Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> this is great. What? Oh, I, might, I have no clip on, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Dude, Limbo's only been out for like a few days. You can't outdo it this quickly, dude. So you're telling me if I wait long enough, it will just take me to the end? Uh, no, it'll kill you at the end. <laughs> Dang it. I, I suck at this game. I got 4%. This music is driving me insane. <laughs> like you chose the song specifically intended to drive us insane. Blue. Green. No! Let's yes. go. I'm the best Simon player. Oh, I understand it now. You only just, <laughs> just oh, got it. <laughs> I got the victory. Let's go. I'm the first Come leaderboard on. victor. Okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh my god. I have 13. You're gonna oh. fail, you're gonna fail. Oh my goodness. Let it get to your head. Oh no! <laughs> what is it? Oh no, it's this one. Oh, God, yes, no. I beat it. I no. got 15. Oh, you, you moved it to the right. Thank you. You did that on purpose, Thank right? You. Move rock to the right? Yo, I did it! It took me a while to realize that the pattern is the same every time. It just adds one. Oh, really? It's it going off the out. screen! I did it! Wow. Uh, that's right, I finally got some people to playtest one of my levels. And to say that they found a couple bugs is a bit of an understatement. Oh? Are you serious? It already doesn't work? I'm gonna go player and practice one, player. Oh, player one, player two. It's showing me two patterns at once. What is happening? What? No! Uh-oh. <laughs> oh no. It's frozen. Or oh, it is showing me a huge- What is it doing? I'm gonna score right, zero and it just started flashing like mad, dude. 15. Yellow, yellow, oh my yellow. God, no. Yellow. <laughs> Yeah, so after a lot of bug fixing, I'm pretty happy to say that this level is finally complete. But how does it actually work? Well, let's start here with the randomizer. Considering there's no random trigger in the game, yet, generating random numbers in GD can be quite difficult. Levels like Lucky Draw use an exploit with shake triggers, but you can just turn that off in the settings, and I don't really want to force people to turn it back on. So I went with a method that exploits the randomness of humans, which is basically a fancy way of saying that it's not random, but it's just so precise that it's basically random for any human. The way it works is by changing this number between four different options incredibly quickly. Every time you click, it reads the value in the frame that you clicked and saves that to memory. That's honestly the main reason why you have to click once before you even start the game. That brings me on to the next part. 
the memory. Now this is kind of complicated, but basically it just stores the order of the colors you'll be shown. This top section is how you save to the memory, and this bottom section is how you read from it. Each column is one color that's being saved, and the randomizer is constantly switching which of these colors is disabled. Every time you click, the three triggers that are still there in that frame will disable three of the triggers down here, which effectively saves a number to memory. The reading and writing systems are almost totally separate, just so that we can write to as much of the memory as we want without having to worry about when we need to read from it. Okay, but when would we need to read from it? Introducing the game logic. Now, this is the scary part for me, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible. There are two main steps to how the game works. First step is to show the player which colors they need to hit. So this is basically reading from the memory which color to show, and then pulsing that color, which is done with these triggers here. This step repeats until it shows you all the colors in the level that you're up to, which is done with these. So, for example, if you have a score of three, you're on level four, and we only want to show the player four different colors. Next step, is where you actually play the game. Each time you confirm a selection, the game checks whether the color you selected matches with the one in memory. If it does, it prepares to check for the next color, but if it doesn't, you're in trouble, and the game gives you the L. Honestly, I just did this because I thought it would be funny. It actually activates this set of triggers here, which hides the game, shows the losing text, and gives you the coin slash death that you earned. Like the first step, this repeats until you select enough colors to complete that level, by which time the game will increase the level and start over again at step one. There's a a couple more smaller systems like the input and display systems, but I won't go over those in detail. You can just make a copy of the level and take a look at those yourself. I tried to make it as easy to follow as possible by separating and labeling everything with boxes and arrows. Something brief I do want to touch on though is the decoration. The level itself lasts for nearly four minutes, and I really didn't feel like building scrolling decoration that spanned across the whole level. So I made one screen length of deco that moves with the player like this. On top of this, there's multiple layers that get outfitted in and out depending on what part of the level you're in decided by these triggers here. Now, the background pulses. You'd think they'd be simple, but no. I wanted to make a spawn loop. However, the song I chose was 110 BPM, meaning I couldn't have a nice number for the delay for the spawn loop. So I did some stuff with collision blocks, but because of the way they work, I had to alternate them. And the song switches to offbeat halfway through, so I had to account for that. And some parts of the level I wanted bright flashes, and some parts I wanted dark flashes. Long story short, it got very complicated very quickly. <laughs> no matter though, because once I had the background pulses in, I just added some background color changes, a subtle overlay glow, and the level was looking far, far better. It's nothing groundbreaking, but I think all of the systems behind the scenes of it are all quite neat. Almost all of this level I did completely on my own, but credit where credit is due, Electrify did help me with working out how to set account number to zero using binary subtraction, so thanks man. Alright, so that got a little bit complicated. I've tried to simplify it as much as I can, but there's only so much you can do to try and simplify this. So I hope at least a little bit of that made sense, and if you want me to go more in depth of like the exact inner workings of it, of like down to each of the triggers of how it all works, let me know and I might do something on the second channel for that, just if you're interested. But yeah, if you want to go ahead and play this level for yourself, it should be up on the servers as of this video coming out, but I'm recording this voiceover like two weeks in advance, so the ID will be in the pinned comment and in the description. But yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. This took me way longer to make than it should have. You may notice that Crafty's video is like eight months old at this point, and yeah, I did finish this like six months ago, and I got all these recordings of like reactions and most of the voiceover like six months ago. I just never finished this video. But I'm really, really happy to have it finally complete. This is like my catch-up arc at the moment. The Bloodbath video, this, and then I'm gonna have an auto-level video that I started making like a few months ago that'll come out next week. See, so yeah, I'm just trying to catch up on all my old projects and there's a pretty big old project that I think a lot of you will be looking forward to that's coming in the relatively near future, but I'm not going to go into that too much. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. Huge thank you to all of the members, of course, as always, especially Cool Guy. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, this video was a very long time in the making. Really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you later.